Hey everybody, welcome to another segment of Tony's show. Today we are going to be liberated. <laughs> Those are really good words, don't you think? Liberated. I was watching The Matrix tonight, uh, not The Matrix per se, but I was watching some uh, analysis of The Matrix. And I got it posted, it will be posted on today's show as well. Um, it's called Freeing Your Mind. And it was an interesting concept about choice. Freedom or subjugation. And the willingness to be comfortably subjugated or to be really free. And it's interesting because it goes along a biblical theme because a lot of this is basically what the Bible was really telling mankind. You have a choice to be free or to be subjugated by, you know, in your, in your uh, comfort, being comfortably subjugated. And I think what we're seeing in, in the end times here, because these are the end times. You know, somebody wrote me saying, well, you know, these are birth pangs. They said, I told them, I said, we've had birth pangs since 1948. This is just another contraction. And this is what this is. I mean... Christ related to the end of the end, the end of the times as a, like a birth pangs. Every time a woman gives a contraction, she gets that much closer in giving birth to a child, new life. And anyway, I was watching this thing with the Matrix, and I was it was interesting the the, the way they did the analysis on it. I was really impressed because I was just talking to another fellow believer earlier. And in our discussion, we're talking about how people who are believers are saying all kinds of things, using all kinds of doctrine and dogma, and yet not really being free. I replied to her, I mean, Jesus used to always ask before he healed anybody, do you want to be healed? Would you like to be healed? You know, I learned the lesson the hard way about that one. You know, I never understood that. It took 20 years for me to figure that one out. <clears throat> do you want to be healed? But when I got to see it firsthand with people that you helped heal and they refused to uh, give, give up the very things that got them, in the, got them in the problems in the first place. And then they kept coming back saying, can you help me? He says, well, you got to help yourself. And they were looking for that magic pill, that magic bullet that you could give them, that one thing that will make them feel good. So after a while, I would quit helping people because I quit helping those type of people because what would be the point? You give them a pill, they're going to go right back to, you know, it's just like a dog returning to its own vomit, you know, that kind of thing. So I decided, you know, and I, and I the same idea applies here. Do you really want to be free? Do you really, really want to be free and all that goes with it? See, we've been programmed. The moment we were born, the moment we cracked open the womb, the, way, the moment we came out of that, that, uh, um, vor uh, not the vortex, what's the term? Um, uh, I can't think of it now. Ha! <laughs> had the word earlier and I can't think of it now. The moment we came through that portal, portal, because basically when we're going through the birthing canal, it's coming through a portal. We get, went through that portal, came out of our mother's womb and the moment we came into this this shithole reality this was designed to see to program us to see what we would do and from the moment we were born the program engaged initiated and integrated and it began to run its course it began to, to analyze us and figure the best way to infiltrate and to assimilate us. So as we went on in life, we got more and more, we were taught more and more the deceptions and the manipulations and the machinations of this world. They call it the matrix. I call it a shithole. But either way, you understand what I'm talking about. So once this matrix got a hold of you, you started following the program. You know, the key to success was do X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. The key to education was 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And so we followed these formulas and then realized after we followed those formulas and reached that, that measure of success, it was taken from us. 
this was the beginning of the removal and giving of pleasure, of, of not privileges, privileges. So as these privileges were given and taken from us, and every time we went back and tried to reinvent the wheel or come back with a better way of achieving whatever goals, we would reach a measure of success, and again it was taken from us. It was like one step forward, ten steps back. And this was all by design. This is the matrix design. This is the design of the, of the uh, system, the machinations, to further program you so that you would dig deeper and deeper and deeper to get into that whatever it was you're looking at success marriage sex money power whatever it was and to get to that essence of real success you literally would have to sell your soul to the devil or to the program that is the only way to really achieve it because even if you do achieve it or achieve a certain measure of success it's doomed 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 to be held on to because that's the nature of the program. So now you have another choice. Do you continue on or do you quit? It all boils down to that choice. And in quitting, it may be a new direction you take. And that's when you begin to understand what's really going on. How the DAC is stuck, how this whole system is a lie, how everything's corrupt. And how there's absolutely no, nothing here that's really there to help you. Death and destruction is awaiting everybody at the end of this, at the end of the road, if you will. So, you know, unless you begin to wake up and recognize that you have a choice of being free, really free, or to stay entrapped in this cycle of uh, compliant or complacent subjugation, slavery. Are you comfortable being a slave? Back in the Old Testament when a man uh, had slaves, there's provisions in the Old Testament that if a man was a slave for seven years, that at the end of the seven years the, the slave owner had to put away land and wealth for his slaves. So, if he became, so once he became free, he can then initiate and engage himself in his own life and his own destiny. Now there was a provision there as well. If the person that was enslaved did not want their freedom, they would go and puncture, they would get an earring of some kind, they would puncture the ear and put a cork in it, indicating that they have acknowledged that they are the, the slave of the owner uh, willingly, willing, willingly choose, a mark if you will, like a little mark on the ear, you are, I chose to be a slave. And they go into this whole detail about freedom and choices of freedom and what it really means to be free. See, what it really means to be free in this, in this system is letting go of the system. Unequivocally, letting go of the system. There are certain things and certain paradigms that you have to continue in until you reach a certain level of freedom. But in, all, in everything and all in all, it's all about being free. If that's what you want, and you're going to have to let go of everything that you think you know. Because majority of the you have to deprogram yourself. You have to cut the program loose. And that's a bitch. I got to tell you, that's a real bitch. Because when you cut the program loose, now you're free falling. You don't know where you're going. You don't know how to get there. You don't know what to do. You really are in a loss. This is where... You know, I call the God factor comes in. This is why I tell everybody to read the Gospels or read the Gospels. This is why I don't engage anybody in any kind of teaching because I don't believe most of these teachings we've been taught today are accurate at all. In fact, I think most of them were designed to uh, mislead us into, into being compliant to this matrix. See, it's not that the scriptures are wrong. It's not that the Bible is wrong. It's those who've interpreted the Bible and have taught the Bible and taught the biblical, so-called biblical truths, have manipulated those truths so that we would become more enslaved to the system. Contorting the certain references about being subject, sub, uh, subject, subjecting yourself or in subjugation to the authorities. Well, if the authority is godly, yes. But if the if authority is not godly, no. If the authority tells you to violate God's principles, who do you choose? That's where, to, where you have to decide. Consequences are going to be met on either side. It doesn't matter which way you choose. But as long as you choose the 
aspect of being godly, yeah, you do suffer consequences, but you evolve. You become more free. You become more evolved. You begin to see the truth. And the more truth you get, the more truth you, that, is, uh, that you access, and the more truth that you are faithful to, that's when you begin to really grow. That's when you begin to see this matrix for the shithole that it really is. And until you do that, you don't see it. You can't see it. It's impossible. How can you see it when you're too busy being distracted by this matrix and the lies of the matrix? We got right now a systemic problem going on in the world. And it has nothing to do with this COVID. It has nothing to do with the corona. It has nothing to do with, you know, bats and fish and things in China. We have a system, systematic meltdown going on where our rights, our freedoms, and our democracies, and our, and our laws are being thrown out the door, right under our noses, right under our noses. They'll let you protest until the cows come home. They'll let you, until there's real legal action being in, uh, uh, engaging, and if they keep changing the, the rules of engagement, then you know you've got a corrupt system. And if you have a corrupt system, that means there's no way of negotiating anything with a system that's corrupt. At that point, either it goes down or you submit one or the other. There is no in-between. None. Zero. Zip. Either you're controlled by an evil entity, because, and that they take control, and they're evil to the core, and they're willing to sell you down the toilet for, for nothing, you know, for a candy bar, and you and you accept that, then what are they going to do to you? How are they going to violate you? How are they going to abuse you? How are they? I was just reading something today about the Agenda 21 and how they want to give to you know take and uh, and appoint to you a job. They're going to appoint a job for you. They're going to control everything in life. You will no longer have any choice whatsoever. None. Zero. Nada. If they tell you to go shovel shit and use a, use a, uh, a, uh, a dirt shovel, like a small little three-inch shovel to shovel, you know, three tons of dirt, that's going to be your job. That's the way it's going to roll. They're not going to give away people free money for nothing. You're going to have to provide some kind of service. And depending what it is and what they determine, that's what you will be doing. And they designed to make you a soldier, and they decide to send you into a war zone where there is no chance of winning. You have no choice but to go through at it, unless you decide that you have had enough, one or the other. That's where we're at. That's where we're at today. And understanding this, and understanding that we are in a, we're losing our system. We're adopting a Chinese format. We're not adopting it, I'm sorry. Let me, let me rephrase that. They're shoving it up our ass, this Chinese format, and basically they're not going to say, they're not going to take no for an answer. The only way we're going to see any changes in Canada and the United States, and I'm going to tell you that straight out, is that we remove the parliament, we remove these premiers, we do what Iceland did. And I said this on the last show. I'm not sure how to go about doing something like that, but this is what needs to be engaged. Because I mean, I was listening to another guy, the deputy mayor of York, and he was talking about uh, Ford in um, in Ontario. And it was I mean, this is this is called word crafting because the guy was coming out speaking from both sides of his arse, literally. On the one hand, he was saying that Ford he was defending Ford on on this particular matter, on the shutdowns. I don't know why Ford hasn't looked at Florida, and Florida said, I'm not, we're not doing this, we're just going back to normal, can't afford this, this economic disaster, and nobody's dying, and there's no science. So if Florida has done this, why hasn't Ontario? So he's saying that Ford is doing something because if he doesn't do nothing and people die, they'll say, why didn't he do something? And if he does something and people die, you can say, well, I've done, it. I've done everything I could. People are going to die, period. Death is an inevitability, whether it's from a flu, heart attack, cancer, autoimmune disorders, you know, nano poisoning, uh, nanobiology, frequency assault, whatever it may be, death is an inevitability. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. So one of these, one day, when it's our time to go home, we're done. 
It doesn't matter if you shut us down or not. And the shutdowns actually propagate death. A friend of mine today in Windsor, she sent me an email showing me that the death count of all the seniors that went into the so-called uh, government housing or government uh, um, homes for the elderly had the highest death rates in the, in the province, something like 10,000. And those who stayed at home had a lower death rate, like about 166. Now what is wrong with that picture? Are we saying that when we put our elderly in a home that the government will just kill them and, and uh, put them in a stat saying that they died of corona? I mean, nobody else has died of anything else in these older homes. I mean, nobody else has died from any any other, uh, you know, autoimmune disorders, diabetes, cancer, respiratory issues, asthma, emphysema, TB, uh, uh, digestive disorders, or bowel. I mean, nobody's died of anything except corona. I mean, you'd have to be asleep to believe this bullshit. Okay, so when we're looking at what's going on with the elderly, guess what? You're next. If we sit here and do sweet FA about protecting the elderly in these homes and in our in our in our lives, they, listen, they took care of us. They were there for us. You know, they were there to help us through this, and now it, because it becomes a little bit what, what for whatever reason you put them in there, you basically signed their death warrant. Have you no conscience? Have you no heart? What do you got? And the little bit of material wealth that they're going to give you, they're going to leave you behind? You're going to be the most miserable bastard that ever walked the planet. Period. And maybe you don't have a conscience, and maybe you're just some sort of alien in a, in a body of, uh, of um, DNA that's of man or woman. Maybe that's what you are. I don't know. But irrespective, you get the point. You get the point. This is this is this is this is a disaster. Canada never was this. We always respected our elderly. We always took care of the elderly. The elderly, if they did go into a home, they were usually in homes where there were other elderly people that they could associate and mingle with, and that also helped them stay alive. They weren't being they weren't being um, reduced to some kind of, of uh, weight or an encumbrance. They were, you know, they were, and then people would, people would visit them, and again, it would give them great pleasure that the family would come by and appreciate them. You know what I mean? It's, 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 um, it's a totally different world. And if we're letting the elderly die, we're not, we're not going to be far behind at all, period. And if we don't give a shit about them, nobody's going to give a shit about us or anybody else. That's how it rolls. You reap what you sow. Sorry, you sow. Yeah, you reap what you sow. That's the way it rolls. That's how it rolls. That's the way it goes. So my point in all of this regarding to our freedom and our choice, watch this video. I think it's a real good video. I think you're going to need to really understand uh, some of the things. They really go into some pretty good detail. I thought it was pretty good anyway. They, they came up with some really good points. And, for some, this, and this will also explain to a lot of you why people have not woke up. Why they won't wake up. They have gotten so compliant and so complacent and so coddled. They never, they never, they never severed a tie from being breastfed by the system. The system, the system has whipped out its tit, and they never got off. They never weaned off. They never. They stayed suckling on the system, and that's where they are at today. And they will not leave it. In fact, as they pointed out in the video, they will defend and fight for this system, even though, even if it's killing them, even if it's abusing them, they will fight for the system. And it's really interesting. The uh, there was one. Uh, hold on, let me find this real fast. Um, yeah, when you're looking at your that one, there's a statement there: being freed from the from their machine overlords. 
And you got to remember, this the Matrix was pumped out, what, about a decade ago, two decades ago? And this was being said then, being freed from the machine overlords. <laughs> Maybe they were telling us the day I was already running the show. Because when you watch the Matrix, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing artificial intelligence running that whole program, running the whole Matrix. In the end, Neo confronts the head AI network because the AI network was being corrupted and there was nothing the AI network could do. So, Neo made a deal with the machine. And in doing so, he rebooted the program so that the virus that was running the machine quit taking over the AI. But that's the only way you're gonna stop this AI. You would have to create a virus and it would have to be on a nano scale or a pico scale where it would get in the system and corrupt it to the core. Once it did that, mankind would be free or freer. But that was a pretty profound statement indicating about mankind being controlled by AI. And I and I caught that. And I thought, well, isn't this interesting? Then I was watching something from Twitter today down in Australia. For those of you in Australia, you may want to go watch this Twitter. It's posted. I want you to pay attention at the two to three second mark. Everybody. I had to watch this thing three times before I caught what happened. They grabbed this kid and it looked like he was being choked out. And what happened was there was a guy standing beside the kid. He grabbed his hand for one second, just long enough to inject the child with something or, or release something through the skin, some sort of a, a epidermis delivery, probably some nano stuff. And then the kid went limp, went limp, and then the guy threw him down. Threw him down like a rag doll. Like, like I said, you know, he's nothing but a goyim. He's a goyim. <laughs> threw him down, you know. Picked him up and carried him out. And that's, and that's exactly what happened. Now, when you look at it, they got you looking at the guy choking. They got you looking at this whole fight scene because, you know, it's that whole fight, fight. You know, there's a fight and everybody comes around, circles around to see the fight. Don't pay attention to the guy choking the guy out. Pay attention to the guy grabbing him by his hand for that. And as soon as he lets him go, he pass, that kid goes limp. Goes totally limp. <laughs> And then the other bastard throws him down. Nothing but a bastard, you know. So it's, uh, you know, I, too bad the Aussies gave up their guns. Too bad. <laughs> too bad. Anyway, want to point that out to everybody so that when you watch these things, I want you to pay close attention to the detail. The devil's in the details. They tell you that all the time. And when you see the kid hanging there and he's fighting, He's got one arm around the other, about the, on the guy because he's got a sword around him. And then the guy grabs him by the hand and then slips something into his hand. And then he passes out. That's, that's some sort of injectable, probably a nano delivery. And he hit the ground. Now, you don't see a needle. You don't see a syringe. But you do see some activity. It's a slight, that's what pickpocketers do. While you're being distracted with a, with a bump on the side, somebody else has grabbed your wallet and, you know, taken your wallet. You don't feel it because the other guy <clears throat> has impacted you and distracted you just long enough for the guy to slip his hand in your wallet in your pocket and pull out your wallet. You know, so it's like I said, important that you see this. Now, why they injected him? Like I said, it just dropped and threw him out. Um, and again, that was a send a message, a fake message, but a message. That they are in power. They are in power. That's what they're trying to tell us. The reality of it all, in all essence, we are really in power. We are the ones in power. We have, well, let's say we have 30 million Canadians in power. And we only have about, what, 190 or 200 parliamentarians that are running the country? Seems to me like a substantial amount of people are, are on our side. <clears throat> and yet... These entities are running the show. And they're surrendering our country to the New World Order, to the United Nations, to the WHO. And when they come out with the vaccines, they're telling you now they're not going to be mandatory. We'll see how long that lasts. See, my, my theory, it's just a theory, you know, 
just a theory, hypothesis, that because so many people will be willing to take that shot, they will put pressure on the government to make sure that everybody is vaccinated. Now, this is another interesting thing about this, too. The, uni the WHO, no, sorry, the World, Tra World Trade Organization is creating a waiver now so that the patent rights would be, would be waived so all these drug companies can mass produce these drugs to, gen generally speak, tag the whole planet. Where is this, not, this mandatory vaccine not being mandatory going to be around? It ain't going to happen. Remember the song, Sorcerer's Death's Construction. We have a bunch of demonic witches in power, in, po in political power, that is trying to reduce mankind to a small number and subjugate them, turning their brains into mush. Having a machine do all the thinking for men. Imagine that. Having a machine doing it for you. Sounds like the year 2525. You know, another another hint, hint, hint. Pay attention, hint, hint, hint. Reducing men and women to a cog. You know, take a hard look at this. A real hard look at this. Someone sent me a word today. Another word, another Hebrew word. I always thought it meant peace and, and prosperity and whatever. But... Apparently, the true meaning of the word shalom means to be subdued and surrender. Now, I don't know if that's fully true. I have to look it up. But the way we've been taught and the way we have been, have been approached with all these concepts, you have to examine everything. everything. I, you've got to examine your Christian faith. You've got to examine your, your Buddhist faith. You've got to examine your Muslim, your Islamic faith. You've got uh, your Judaic faith. Your Hindu faith, I'm, you know, your native beliefs, they all have to be reinvestigated because you don't know now at this stage how many of these men that have been put in power have not been supplanted in there by either, you know, the Zionists, the Masonics, the, the, uh, the Jesuits, or some political wing having a person going into a, a position to control the masses through some sort of religious ideology. You have to really read your Bibles now, you know, if you're a Christian or a believer, because you can't trust the ministers. You can't trust the TV evangelicals. I was watching a guy yesterday, and this guy was, um, he was dressed in some sort of uniform, and he was propagating. He was trying to show how all the religions are the same. They're saying the same thing, blah, blah, blah. And it, it was this universal nonsense I was looking at. <clears throat> And I'm thinking to myself, somebody's going to believe this. Because they've never read their books, they've never read their doctrines, or they've never read their, and they've never really followed, followed up on the teachers that taught them anything. As a result, we're going to have a new world order with a one world religion. And this, this vaccine really resembles the mark. Because... It's a chimera vaccine, a beast. So, if this is the case, they're going to try to tag everybody in the world, and they're not going to give a shit what you believe. You know, you look at you look at Revelations, I think seventeen. I think my buddy was showing me this that Christians get beheaded. Get beheaded. That means they stood up for their faith. They weren't going to compromise. How many Christians will do that? Do you think today? How many are saying, "Well, I'm afraid. I don't know if I'd be able to do it." <laughs> I mean, it's 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 not it's legit. I get that, you know. And, I'm, and there's no judgment, there's no condemnation, nothing. But obviously, you're not seeing the big picture here. See, the big picture is that this world is is done. It's finished. It's, there's no more reset. There's no more redial. It's now going to be taken over, and it's going to be wiped out. And nothing that was here today will be here tomorrow. Nothing. And that will be get here before the second coming. The way they're going to destroy people on this planet, it's, it's going to be here long before then. And you're going to be, and by accepting this, you're saying, you're saying that you're willing to be compliant 
to being a slave in whatever comfort zone they put you in. That's what you're saying. You're not. You're saying you're not saying you want to be autonomous. You're not saying you want to be creative. You're not saying you want to be free. You're willing to subject and surrender yourself to a system, a beast system that will consume you anyway. You're, we are all going to die one day. I always say this all the time. Today is a good day to die. Today is a good day to die. And what I mean by that is it's, it's, a, it's the day to be prepared that we may just die. We may not get this rapture thing going. I was just talking to somebody else about that today. I, you know, and another believer, she was telling me that if there is something going to happen, she thinks it's going to be at the end. I agreed with her. I have never seen anywhere written down historically where Christians got off scot-free. Even when they ran and hid, sooner or later they were they suffered some kind of persecution. So I mean, and there may have been something I don't know, but I've never I personally have never read anything. Um, so my point on all this is, the subjugation to slavery is what you're willing to give give up the kingdom for. You know, it's like that guy Cipher in the, in the Matrix. He talks to the uh, AI uh, security and says, I want you to put me back into the matrix. I don't want to remember a damn thing. I want to be rich and be of uh, importance. And he was making a deal with an AI. <laughs> an AI that doesn't have any moral compass, doesn't have any ethical guidelines, that it has to follow and has no spiritual concept whatsoever. He was making the deal to go back. And uh, the way they related his name Cypher meant zero. And the concept about what they were trying to show you in that whole thing is about finding your faith. They made a real good comment. In order, one of the ways to break free of the matrix, you have to pay attention to your intuition and to your dreams. You know, and because and because the longer you stay in a state of fear, fear, you're still tied to the machine. It's when you have faith is when you're cutting the machine loose. Jesus said to himself, I say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, and not doubt, it shall be done. So we have to get back to that, not for some prosperity bullshit message, not for some horse shit whatever, you know. In the true sense of the word, becoming free. See, because these prosperity messages, all they did, like I said, was a contortion. The whole freaking thing was a contortion. Basically, you're using God as a genie. Oh, great genie, I need a new car. Oh, great genie, I need a new house. Oh, great genie. And in fact, <clears throat> what that was really all about is us growing in our faith. Growing in the fact that we could do things, not just knowing things, and again, we do have to have wisdom, we do have to have knowledge. That goes without saying. But it has to be a godly wisdom and a godly knowledge. One that I, I know I don't have, I don't, I don't have enough of. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm, I'm dumb as a bag of rocks when it comes to a lot of that. I'll be the first to tell you. I read the Bible, I read several different versions of the Bible. It doesn't mean I know anything, it just means I read the Bible. And that's where a lot of people are today. They just read the Bible. They don't know anything. They just read the Bible. So it's when the, when the spirit quickeneth is when you really get what God is saying. It's God's word. You can follow any doctrine, any dogma, any teaching, and you can, you can you, they can do all kinds of this verse, verbal days, this verse, blah blah blah. It's like a, you're deciphering a code, and that may work on some level. Sometimes it doesn't. I've seen more more times where they people are trying to put different different um, scriptural references together to validate something and a lot of times they don't they don't there's no validity it just it looks good because people don't read and don't interpret what they're reading or they don't understand what they're reading so somebody can come along and throw a bunch of scriptures together and you go oh yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah you know and in all in all honesty it's just bullshit so you know and I'm not saying that to be mean-spirited I'm saying that's so you'd be prepared you know, the Bible says, the Bible tells you, test all things. Test all things and hold fast to what's good. Not everything out here is shitty. Some things have some merit. Those things hang on to. 
But for the most part, don't just just don't blindly oblige yourself to believe in whatever bullshit somebody's preaching. I don't care what faith you're in. I always hear, you know, when you hear about the Muslims and you got this Muslim group fighting this Muslim group and this Imam says, kill in the name of Allah. And the other one says, kill in the name of Allah's with us. And, Allah's, and it's like, you have a war. Muslims are killing each other in the name of God. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. And then they wind up losing their families. As once they're dead, their families are gone to They're harvested and sent off to whatever. And this is, and, and I've never seen an imam lead the march, lead the lead the battle in the field. Same thing with Christians. I have never seen a Christian minister advocating war, leading the leading the charge. I, what happened? <laughs> what happened? You know, kill in the name of God. Kill. We're going to set these people. We're going to take over. Yay! Kill. Where are these ministers? Well, brother, I got to stay at home and I got to pray for all you so that you come back alive and God will hear my prayer and blah, 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 you know, all this nonsense. Not saying stuff like that can't happen. I'm just saying you got to think. You got to think. The one thing that I will say, and you might want to correlate this, every time Jesus did something, he led the charge. He didn't send his disciples to do the dirty work. He led the charge. He took the, if he said something, he took the lead. And when I see a minister do that, you got my respect. If I see you sitting on your ass and telling your congregation to go do whatever, I don't give a shit what you are. If you're an imam, if you're a rabbi, if you're a Hindu priest, a Buddhist, whatever. If you are not taking the, char lead, taking the bull by the horn and leading the charge, then shut up. That's my attitude. Just shut up. You ain't got no business telling anybody to go die for anything when you yourself are not willing to sacrifice your life for the same cause you're telling your people to do this, do for you. You have no business. None. Zero. Same with, you know, when, when ministers are telling people to, to do whatever. It's the same thing, you know, same thing. We are here to, we are here to evolve and get beyond this matrix, get beyond this shithole. And I think we're here also to develop the faith, the perceptions, the understanding, the understanding of what's going on, understanding how to really read things and understand what you're reading. This is important. It's, it's not one thing to read something, and it's one thing to be influenced by somebody in what you've just read and what they said, but it's deep down within is where you have to see where the rubber meets the road on what you're reading. If you don't know, ask God to show you. It's the best thing I can tell you. It's his word. You don't know what he's talking about. Maybe you need to ask him, God, excuse me, but mm, I don't understand God ease. Can you translate this for me? You know, that kind of thing. It's just one of those things that we need to, like I said, pay attention to. You know, oh, I forgot to mention Randy Hiller, he got a fine for a lockdown protest today. There was something that went on in Toronto today. A store owner had a, a business running and he had people packed in. He said he wasn't shutting down and the police went into his establishment, uh, broke in, uh, changed the locks. And when they went in today, there was a big brouhaha there about what was going on. So they arrested the guy and so we're playing it by ear. Now they want to lock us down by Monday here in, you know, uh, whatever, in Windsor or in Ontario. And then we got, in Windsor, Ontario, we got this goofball. Ahmed, Khabachmi, whatever the hell his name is. This, this, uh, again, I'm not insulting people of the Middle East. If this guy's an asshole. And I don't care where he comes from. But he comes from the United States, Canada, Europe, Middle East, Far East, Near East, Russia, China. This guy is an asshole. Okay. He has now taken away your religious exemptions from wearing a mask. I'm not sure how he quali can qualify to do this. But in the sense, in this one sense, in this one sense, okay, by taking away that exemption, now we'll see who's going to defy whatever. You know, if it comes down to this, like I said, you know, we got all this Gestapo bullshit coming down the pipe here. Uh, and again, a guy, from what I understand, somebody wrote me, said, or told me today, saying that this guy's only qualified as a psychologist, a psychiatric doctor not a doctor of medicine 
What in bloody hell does this guy got to do telling anybody anything in Windsor? He can FRO, capital FRO. This is unbelievable. A psychologist? What the hell does he know about practicing medicine? So if this is the case, this guy needs to step down. And the city, city, oh my gosh, the city should be, get, the city needs a $10 billion lawsuit just to make, just to stop this stupidity. I mean, seriously, you put a psych, psychologist, ugh. Like I said, there are days you wonder, why are we here? Then there are days you wonder, hmm. Now, I think I got this, yeah, I talked about that, I talked about that. Talked about that. Yeah, I think I got everything. I'm not sure. Let me take, take a look here. Yeah, pretty close. Anyway, I want to go over that thing with the deputy mayor real quick. He was he was protecting Ford, like I said, saying that if he didn't do anything, he'd be damned. If he did something, he would be damned. You know, and I said, you know what? Open the damn thing up. Open it wide open. If I'm going to die, I'll choose to die. If, someone's, if someone needs to wear a mask, then wear a mask. So the deputy mayor said the same thing, pretty much. If you need, if you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. But he uh, he questioned the Ministry of Health in the Toronto region. He says, well, how is it that we have a curfew at 10 o'clock at night and everybody has to go home? He says, well, does this virus know to come out at 10.01? At 10.01, it's going to come out and get everybody that came out of the bar. Is that what, you know, that's what he was saying. So then they shut down Toronto. Now York is right across, it's a suburb of Toronto. It's right across the street. There's a, I forget what, what uh, road divides Toronto and York. York had Walmart, uh, had Costco, had all the stores open on that side of the street. There was a mall right across in Toronto. I forget the name of the mall. And it was closed, not, not a soul in sight. They killed Toronto. And so now they're trying to figure out how, how does this work? Does the virus know, does the virus know that it, it, at York it stops, or when it comes to York, it stops in Toronto? It doesn't go across the street? Well, that's a pretty smart virus. <laughs> For those of you who believe in the virus, oh boy, you should, need, you should go see that psychiatrist we have running the health department in Windsor. He might be able to help you. <laughs> Doctor, I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> you know that movie where the guy dies? He says, uh, you know, he, he, uh, what's he, say? he says he sees ghosts. You know, I forget, some kid who's played his part in the movie and he says, I see, I see ghosts. <laughs> When I when I'm under the shit covers and I'm and I'm frantically panicking, he says, "What do you, what's happening? What do you see? I see stupid people, and there are lots of them." <laughs> ah. <laughs> this is where we are today, and this was the shithole of shit of 2020. Wait till 2021 gets here in 2022 and 2023. When 2023, we're still going to have this COVID-23. It has mutated. It has gyrated. It has spun. It has run. And it's still spreading. And it's killing people all over the planet. And we need to vaccinate. And the vaccines didn't work. We got to come because we got a new strain of this corona. It's killing the planet. This is the bullshit. That's the bullshit. And everybody will fall asleep sooner or later if we don't stop it, and if we and if you don't leave the the and and take off to you know off grid in the middle of nowhere, or go to Europe or some other place where they aren't this insane, it's gonna come everywhere anyway sooner or later. Probably the safest place right now would probably be Africa. At least in Africa, you get to carry a gun. Just a just a little slight ghetto humor there. <laughs> At least you know you're going to die there, so at least you can defend yourself. Here, they've taken away your means of defense. Ridiculous, you know, ridiculous. Well, you can go to Russia and freeze, 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 freeze your ass off. You know, there's not enough vodka or antifreeze there to stop that from happening. <laughs> you know, I'm throwing these things out there off the cuff. 
because all these things I just said were stupid and retarded. And this is no different than the retardation that we're dealing with. The stupefaction, the retardation that we're dealing with today is just incredible. And again, a politician gets a ticket for a lockdown, a protest. I mean, I'm just... Makes you wonder. Keep your eye on our charter. Keep your eye on our constitutional rights. Keep your eye on everything because... It may go by the way of the dodo bird. And if that happens, what are you going to do then? You know, when it comes down to taking the chip, taking the vaccine, what are you going to do then? I don't know what you're going to do. I know what I'm going to do. But I, whatever you do, it is your call. Ain't going to be no judgment. Ain't going to. I'm not going to judge you. The only one that will judge you in the end is the one you'll have to stand, the throne you'll have to stand before. Other than that, I am not going to judge you. You'll you'll be dealing with the consequences of your of your of your agreement to a, a compliant, complacent subjugation. Imagine that. Oh, you'll have you you'll go back to normal. There's never going to be a normal. By the time this is said and done, most of the businesses today will be gone. They'll be broke, busted, and taken out. By the time this is done, everyone will have been vaccinated and there'll be a very small amount of the population left. Maybe the 600 million that the uh, uh, elders of Zion have talked about, or maybe the 500 million that the Georgia Guidestone has talked about. Either way, the population will be reduced. Businesses that are here today will not be here tomorrow. Things you have, you have uh, access to today, you will not have tomorrow. You'll be solely at, so, solely at the mercy of the medical mafia that we have today. will have taken over, probably running, running the government by that time. And if we're still around... Some people say, well, Jesus will be back by then. And we don't know the day or the hour. He didn't know the day or the hour. You know, when I hear that, when I hear that kind of shit, man, it makes me, makes me crawl on the inside. Well, Jesus might be back during it. He might be, but he might not be. So you're going to be prepared either way. You know, that's my, uh, throw, I have my throw out, throw down at everybody. If he comes back, that's great. We leave, we go home. If he doesn't come back, then what are you going to do? Because if you don't get ready now, I'm going to tell you something. As Christian as people may be, they're not going to be able to help you because they're going to barely have enough for themselves. They may want to help you, and if they do help you, it'll be at a great expense to them. So if you're really a true believer in God in any form or fashion, then you need to prepare now so that you don't become a burden to your fellow brethren one way or another. See, that goes hand in hand. Because if everybody's got something and everybody shares what they have, I was again sharing again. We were talking, uh, talking to that my friend out east there. She, uh, no, she's a believer. So we were talking. She and her and I were talking. I said this is going to go back to the days of the early church when the early church had c combined everything they had and formed a community, communism, community. You know, same kind of concept. You know, but a real a real form of communism where the wealth is distributed and everybody's looked after. And that's how the church survived. That's how we're going to survive. And I'm not saying everyone's going to do this, but I'm just saying you have a better chance of survival when everybody starts to contribute and then everything's delegated. Because um, this is going to be a real rough go. A real, real rough go. So anyway, I'm going to leave you with that thought. I want you to really con con consider what I've said. You may not have believed anything I've said, and that's fine. You know, that's fine. You know, but I mean, these are some things that I'm letting you know as far as like, how can a virus know when to cross the street? You know, why did the virus cross the street? Oh, to get on the other side, to infect more people. You know, that kind of thing. Think, observe. If you're afraid, don't be, don't, that's not an evil thing. Quite frankly, that's a normal thing. It's when the fear runs you, and when the fear blinds you from, uh, from thinking in things of solutions and alternatives, that's when you become, that's when it becomes a problem. So like I said, 
you got nothing to lose. Either way, is going. There is going to be a price. There is no out. There is no out. Either you're going to comply, or you're going to die. And you're going to die either way. Whether you die by the shot, or you die because they kill you, or because you've got old age, or because you've been inf inflicted, you're going to die one day. That's how it rolls. That's what God says. You know, you, you know, he, no man. And Jesus said himself, he didn't know when he was coming back because no man know the day or the hour. No man says that. No man. So we're talking about heavenly bodies you know, that are deciding certain things. And I think we're going to see this wrap down. Uh, the reset concept that they're talking about is again to get everybody to believe and to subject themselves into being compliant to a demonic system. So you get stuck in the lower frequency band. So you cannot evolve, cannot grow, cannot pray, can't do nothing. You are now following the religion of the world. You're tethered, you're battered, and you're, and you're taken over. Think about that. All right, as I go on uh, the shows here, I always tell everybody, I said at the beginning of the or middle of the show, read the Gospels. Read what Jesus had to say. Follow what he had to say. You know, I'm of the mindset of John 3.16 and 3.17. You know, the concept that God came here to save the world. Or that the world might be saved through him. Might be saved through him. You know, so these are things that I, I present. A directional pointing. And again, start with the Gospels and read and understand what Christ had to say. You know, that you'll find comfort. I actually had somebody contact me today. Uh, uh, it was a good email. And he said the same thing. He started reading his Bible. He started doing some of the things that I, I've been advocating uh, in regarding to... Uh, he had something going on with his feet. Had been suffering with it for years. And he did the salt packs. And he started reading the Bible. He said all of a sudden his, his foot size went down one and a half inches. <laughs> Talk about removing heavy toxins down in the feet. Anyway... He wrote me to thank me, and he wrote me to let me know that he was, you know, again, reading his Bible. Which is good to hear. I'm glad to hear people are, t and I get this lots, lots these days. People are writing me, say, yeah, I started reading my Bible, you know. And I'm glad to hear it. I really am. Uh, but read what Jesus had to say. You know, I always say, don't bother with the Old Testament. Not at this point. When you understand Jesus, and you understand what you're reading there, then, you know, if you want to venture. The only other two books, I do encourage two books uh, in the New Testament. Uh, the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs. Uh, and if you want to see how it all began, the book of Genesis, you know, the rest is all history about Hebrews and how, like I said, they've been, they were chosen and how they, how they were slaves, how they evolved, how they fell, how they returned, you know, until they finally rejected God, you know, and God got tired of them. So, and again, uh, as a result of that act, we are, we have been given an opportunity. So. You won't, yeah, and the longer, I will say one more thing, the longer you live, live on this planet, and the more you see God's hand in your life, you'll begin to appreciate that whole salvation message. In the beginning, you don't really, you, you're grateful and you're glad, but you can't really begin to appreciate it until you go through it for a period of time and begin to realize how God has been delivering us from all the snares and traps that could have taken us out or has guided us in and out of we got into trouble and how he guided us guided us out and some and the price we had to pay so you begin you will begin to appreciate his handiwork you know i'm not talking some religious bullshit you know i religion and me don't get along at all i don't care for any religion but I do understand and grasp the concept of God and God conscious and God and being godly. And when I see, when I look back in my own personal life, see how God's hand had been there, I technically should have been dead many times. And here I am today talking to you about reading the Bible and reading about God. So check that out uh, and, and grasp that. And if you're older and been in, in walking in the faith, just reflect back on how many times God has put, pulled you out of the fire, pulled, you know, pulled your ass out of trouble. Uh, it's amazing when you look and see how many times he has saved us 
from ourselves even, you know, and how even though we go through some real tough ringers, uh, we, we're here, we're still here. Anyway, on the site themselves are people that are actively trying to help you, uh, fortify you, edify you. You got Sherry at Three Arts Church, you got Brian 396, you got Ty in Out West, you got Shy in Israel, uh, you got um, uh, Yanni in, in Europe, you got me here, me in uh, Ontario. Help anybody you can financially. You know, I encourage you to help anybody financially, especially as times get going. If you're broke and you ain't got no money and you can barely eat, just, you know, then please take care of yourself. We're not here to take your money, your last dollar, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's not how we roll. And there's no guilting anybody into giving us your last dollar. That's just bullshit. Take care of yourself, take care of your families. But if you can share our information, share the data with everybody, please do so. Share the shows, share the, share the vids that we've done, share the bit shoots, the YouTube, share the Minds channel. Brian's put out so much work on the Nano, you know, help him out. You got, like I said, Ty out in the West, you got Sherry, Three Hearts. She's out there preaching the gospel. And she's one of these women, like I said, I, she doesn't, she tells it the way it is, man. So go check her out. All right, and I forget, oh, you got Yanni in Europe, he's doing, and he's putting up the YouTube post. So, I mean, he's doing his, his share to get the message out that way. Which is great, wonderful. Uh, you know, everyone is doing, and you got uh, Shy in Israel who's trying to reach people in Israel. That ain't no easy task. I don't, I don't envy him at all. <laughs> He'll send me an email. I don't either. <laughs> but that's where God has put us on the planet. So anyway, help anybody you can. And on that note, just remember, we are still here by the grace of God. Remember that. All right, to the next seg to the next segment to your health. Take care.